This is your cue, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's my cue. You think I've been doing this for a year? You don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm sitting here thinking in my mind about what I'm going to say right now, and then my cue comes, and I just drop the ball and shit my pants and say absolutely nothing. Uh, yeah, this is Judgmentalist, your co host on this wild travel journey. We are here as Big Sexy Digital Nomad. Uh, I guess we're going to find out what we're going to say as we say it. Here is your host, Big Sexy, and a special guest, which I'm sure he will introduce. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever this is hitting your ear holes. I hope that it is good. Dude, this is episode 50. Five zero. Five zero. Like, like we've been doing this quite a bit, and that's that's. I love milestones. I love milestone episodes, and like you know, you think episode fifty two would be a milestone because it's you know fifty two weeks. We do one a week, but you know we've had some dancing around, so that's not quite accurate. But fifty is a milestone episode, and you guys here we have a, a multiple guest stars. Of course, you know we have Fox in the background as always. Always a star. Always a star. Um, and today, uh, to celebrate episode 50, um, is uh, the other half of the Barry White Blacksit Tour 2023. Um, I'm going to draw this out because um, my, my, my special guest is taking care of our other, our other special guest. All right, so I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Ooh, I like um, curveballs. While we're waiting for everything to reconnect there, I uh, I want to thank those people who support us. And I know a lot of podcasts do this, and they do it at the very, very end of their podcast episodes. I want to jump in here. I want to do this at the beginning. These are some people who have seen with their own eyes the bull with a butthole Maybe not in person, but they've seen it. <laughs> and now you've all heard it. Listen, you got to understand, Big Sexy went back to Malaga with a tape recorder and poked that bull in the butthole to get that sound. <laughs> Let's hear it again. Pretty damn right. exciting there. So I want to thank Bree, Chris Lowry, Michael McKenna, Lee Popsicle, Sebastian Robbins, and Joshua Tarr. You guys are our heroes. You guys are our champions. We we love and appreciate the support. Thank you the guys support. so very much. I can't say how much I love and appreciate the support in one coherent sentence or thought, but it's there. I promise you. <laughs> so bullwithabutthole.com if you want to be added to that list to be thanked whenever we can um, to get all some super special bonus content. Um, I did another hypnosis show yesterday, so shortly that oh man, that's gonna be amazing. That, that, that video, video should be popping up on the Patreon. It that one will get a little delayed because um, we switched over to a much nicer high tech camera. The other half of my show has that camera because he's more of a tech guru than me. Um the files when they come out of this camera are 55 gigabytes or more oh, that's unedited. Big. And so he's got to process it and do all this other stuff. So I won't have access to it till probably tomorrow. And at the time of this recording, tomorrow is not only Big Sexy's birthday, but it's, it's the my start birthday. of... It's my birthday! It's, it's almost like we're having two birthdays here. It is, yeah. you know, yours, kind of the podcast. We're damn close to it. Um, you know, but I'm, uh, we're heading out to Atlantic city for the weekend. We are going to go to super Frico because they've opened a super Frico in Atlantic really? city. Oh, okay. So, so Spiegel world at Caesar's palace in Atlantic city has launched a show. So they have, what do they have? Um, well, hold on, hold on. Before you get into 
all yes. that, man. Is, let, let's talk about because I know that our listeners are dying to know who our special guest is. I've yes, already yes. mentioned it is the the better half of the Barry White Blacks It 2023 tour uh, through Europe and abroad. It is none other than my lovely wife, Nilla. <sighs> hey guys. <laughs> you were on what episode seven, episode nine, something like that. So, uh, I mean, way back, way, yeah. be- way in the beginning when you when you came out to Vegas, we That's did a right. live episode right before we all went to go see Mad Apple. That was That's right. That night. one time I went to Vegas. Yeah, that, um, that one <laughs> single time that month that you went to Vegas. <laughs> What's happening, uh, man? Hi, baby. How hi. you doing? It's really good to be here. It's good to see you too, Judgmentalist. Absolutely. Very cool I, to see I you. Obviously, always hear about you. It's great to be in 2023's version of face to face again. <laughs> um, right, right, right. Definitely on the uh, connecting across the, the the waves of oceans. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it's it's not even weird anymore. This is just normal, you know. Like this is it, yeah. It, it, and we used to we grew up, and and I'm sure you being a child of an era not too disconnected from mine grew up watching shit like back to the future and back to the future part two and just this lunacy of the idea that we'd have video phones and and here we are just clicking a few things on the computer and we're there like it's very star trek yeah yeah Yeah, very recorded I, i feel like we're beyond that like that all that Star Trek technology and all that futuristic technology seems outdated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yet, where's my flying car? <laughs> Where the fuck's my flying car? Look, one of my favorite things to see every so often on the internet is, and there, there are, and I'm sure you've seen many of these because there's multiple different versions of them where it'll be, you know, somebody saying, in the future, we're going to have, you know, flying cars. And then the next panel is some ludicrous fucking product that exists right. today. And it's like, oh, how far we have not come. <laughs> right. Um, right, that part. Yeah, hoverboards, we're, we're, we're close, kind of. Yeah, we're getting there. But, and uh, flying cars. We've seen we've a seen... prototype of a flying car. Yes, that's true. Perhaps, maybe, maybe. a real thing. Maybe, maybe close. We'll, we'll, see. we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But uh, be- before we get into to talking to Nella, you were saying something about uh, Atlantic City? Uh, yeah, we yeah, so Frico. so super Frico. Anybody who's Vegas centered knows that Spiegel World has what three shows out there. They've got Absinthe, which is like their flagship show. Mm-hmm. They've got Opium, and then they also have the Atomic Saloon right. over in the Venetian. Fabulous and then show. they've got the amazing Italian fusion psychedelic restaurant Super Frico. Right. And, and if you're not Vegas Central, you probably have heard our daddy podcast, ICS, talking all about it as well, as they love to to go there on special occasions. So they've opened one up, I think it was in June, that they opened up. They've got It's a show and Super Frico in Atlantic City at Caesars Palace. Um, and I will, uh, I'll be there Saturday. Nice. Which, uh, oh, wow. I mean, I, I love a lot of partying going on this weekend. What's that? A lot of partying going on this weekend. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's Labor Day weekend for for those of us in the states. Oh, I guess it is Labor Day weekend. I, I, and, you know, I'm in Romania right now, so you know, I don't know nothing about right. it. Anymore. Every day is Labor Day. In Every Romania. day. Is Labor Day. <laughs> Every day is a day of labor here. But uh, speaking of which, uh, tomorrow. Yours truly will have some birthday festivities that my beloved is setting up, uh, which we cannot talk about. Yeah, it's um, a okay. surprise. It's all a surprise. Oh, nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, uh, World Travelers, by the time this episode drops, um, I'm sure I will have posted videos on the Instagram. Uh, so you, if you haven't seen it already, swing over to our Instagram at Big Sexy Nomad or at Who is Big Sexy. Um, and you'll see, I'm sure I will have posted some of the fun activities and shenanigans that I got into for my birthday. Yeah, we got a whole day planned with like, I don't know, different people appearing at different times, different places. 
some things you can only do here. Some things, I don't know, I think you'll enjoy. You can maybe yeah. do elsewhere, but I don't know, it'll be unique here. I so like it. It'll so be fun. I'm really looking forward to it, so I'm excited. Uh, if you guys already follow me on Instagram, you already know that uh, if you wanted to give me something for my birthday, uh, I did put up my Venmo, my Cash App, my PayPal, and my Zelly uh, QR codes because uh, we're looking to get back to Spain. Oh, yes, we are. And so if you really, if you want to give me something for my birthday, help us uh, get back to Spain as soon as possible and stay there uh, for a while. Also, uh, if you haven't already, uh, tell somebody about the podcast. We need more subscribers. And feel free to Always. go over to, to bullwithabutthole.com and join. I realize it's only 12 bucks a year. Like, you would give me a gift that was like $12. Do that. Do that. I'd appreciate that. I'm, I'm and even if anything. not, again, the, the listeners are the A1 important thing. Even in a buck a month, we know that it's just not something that everybody wants to do, and we right. get it. No pressure. No pressure. If you want to get more, you're also welcome to get more. Like, you're not limited to a buck a month. But, you know, but it's, it's there for you. don't those know who how you, you would do that. Because Somebody figured it out, so uh, we, we, you know, we'll, we'll figure oh, no, it out. No, 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 no. They, they didn't. That was no. just that's no. that's just a currency translation. I don't think so. That's, well, I'm think, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll we'll get into that much later. But uh, since I have a special guest, I want I want to chat some uh, stuff that's going on. So yeah, let's chat it up. Um, let's talk from the beginning. How has your experience been? Because last time we talked to you, we were. In, in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, we hadn't even started this whole like journey yet. Well, I mean, it turned out in well, crazy ways. To be fair, you had uh, the planning had started. You the knew planning the planning had started, well, the planning the planning started had before started. we started this podcast. Yeah, but we yeah. were still living. Living in Vegas. In Vegas. Yeah, just kind of living life, dreaming, planning. And now we've kind of gotten to this place that I would never have dreamed of. Like we never, ever dreamed or planned we'd be in Romania. So it's taken a few t twists and turns, I think, since Ooh, then. That, that's an understatement. Yeah. I mean, let's see. What was different? We Our first plan was to, uh, let's see, the, the cruise went exactly as we planned. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, the, the first changes came with how we were getting from Right. California to Miami. That's right. Right, because right. when we started, there was going to be this whole uh, Barry White Blacks at Farewell Tour right. all, all across, across the, the country. country. Yeah. Uh, we're going to rent cars and, and drive all over the location. Even we had talked about meeting up in uh, South Dakota mm -hmm. uh, for tax purposes. <laughs> um, and I only know this because I've been re-listening to those old episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, getting stuff up for an upcoming uh, YouTube channel. Um, so I've been listening to those episodes, getting things ready for that. So be on the lookout for that. Go go that now. I mean, you go. it's, it's live when this episode drops. Um, our YouTube channel is live. We can get our podcast on YouTube as well. Um, and uh, we also... Well, yeah, so, so the so, first change was the road trip, right? right so right. we had planned this whole like road trip from California all the way down to Miami, visiting like dozens of people along the way. I mean, everywhere. You guys were going to go family, up. You guys were going to go up, down. down. You were going to go through Tennessee. All yes. All around. Right. And then we tried to rent a car. I was like, oh, oh, maybe we're not going up there. Maybe, maybe we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're thing because that looks really, really expensive. That was crazy. You know, it'd been, I don't know. I hadn't tried to rent a car for, I don't know, maybe five or six years. And uh, there was a price difference. It was a big change. It was something like even four even in a couple grand. years because we we had rented yeah, a car crazy. when we we had rented a car elsewhere. Some yeah, one, a few, one a of the cabs we went to. Oh, we went to I mean, Miami. Was yeah, it was like right? a and we day drove or from two. Miami to Orlando. Yeah, that was. But then you know when we looked at like a month rental, I'm thinking, okay, maybe a couple grand, so on and so forth. I couldn't find like anything grand. for less than like thirty eight hundred dollars. You probably could have taken. And obviously, there's risks involved with a car that's got age. Yeah. But one of those cars that you yeah. guys had and have sold. Yeah. And instead of renting a car, taking that car. And then when you got to Miami, you could have gotten the cameras rolling and lit the bitch on fire. I don't know. <laughs> All of the traction on the social media buzz from I that. I don't know if you remember. We, actually, out better. we actually discussed we considered doing that. most of that. It, well, not the burning car. Not the burning car, <laughs> but definitely right. the, the taking our car, taking my good old uh, Kia Sportage, a.k.a. Beauty. Yeah. Um, and 
drive, packing it all up and driving across country. Yep. And then if the listeners remember, Christmas happened. And the alternator went out. Oh, that's right. And my car died in the middle of the freeway. That is a thing that happened. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so we're like, oh, you know what? We may not want to drive this car across country. Yeah. Because for sure, we would be in the middle of fucking nowhere. Right. And the car is going to die. Exactly that part. And we're on a deadline. We got to get to Miami by April 22nd. Yeah, definitely not missing the boat, for sure. And right. Mo, Benny, and Jack don't give a shit about anything except for your currency. Exactly, exactly. And, and, you, and, and you learned that the hard way. <laughs> really, really did learn that the really hard way. And so uh, that plan got altered. <laughs> so to speak. As it were. Uh, so yeah, then we cross country. We flew, and yeah, so we saw we saw less people than we thought we were going to, but we saw some friends, saw some folks. We got to hang out. It was a nice kind of slow travel trip, which was good. So I mean, it was it was good. And then the cruise was amazing, as as it was to be expected. Uh, and you know, you've heard some of the interviews. I'm pretty sure from the time that we spent at the cruise. Yes. In terms of like, and also you know, we played mahjong for days and days, and you know, I did bungee classes. I've never done a bungee class. That was amazing. It was fun. Um, so yeah, we did a lot of like great stuff, and then we hit Barcelona, and we realized oh. we had so much stuff. Like yeah. so much stuff. Like we we arrived with something like thirteen bags. It was stupid. It was a lot. <laughs> like, it was a lot. We had seven big blue amount. bags. So. But, but going into it, that was the plan because yeah. you talked about, hey, we're gonna if, if we drive there and we hop on the cruise. Yeah. You know, they're they're not weighing your luggage. They're not. It's right. not a two bag thing. You're not paying per bag. None of that. All bets are off. And you know have at it so it, it was a great plan until we actually got there and then i was like oh yeah. this is why people don't do this <laughs> Let this podcast be a lesson to those of you who are considering any elements of anything that we do learn lessons from people who've done it yeah you get and nothing also, else out of it here yeah, it is. We, we really thought we were gonna go to barcelona for a little bit malaga for a little bit and then Portugal and in Portugal, a lot of it. and ideally, we were when we got to Portugal, we were going to find a place to store a lot of that luggage already, since we were planning on coming back. Right. But in uh, as we got closer to the sh- the cruise, we realized that might not be a thing. But by that point in time, we got everything already, so you know we'll make do as we possible. Yeah. And then and then we actually got to Portugal on the cruise. On we the cruise had a ship. day in Lisbon. And Lisbon is amazing, y'all. Like, it was fun. It was like New York, only like cleaner. There were like people from everywhere. I mean, just, it was good food. We had a great time. We went to several cities. This is all in one day, right? And then we realized that it is a very, very hilly country. It's a lot of hills. It's a lot of hills. It's like, you know, San Francisco, but like worse. Yeah. Yeah. Because we didn't have a car. (laughs) We also didn't have a car. It's good to see that there are places, like you mentioned San Francisco, I know Pittsburgh to be one of these places where you always feel like you're going uphill both ways when you're going somewhere. Somehow, Uh, somehow, yeah. You you are somehow in Pittsburgh, which I've been to far more than San Francisco. In fact, I don't even know if I've been to San Francisco proper. uh, You you feel like you're always at the top and the bottom of a hill at the same time. Yeah, and And, in Portugal you are. You're exactly in that place all the time. All the time. Constantly. Non stop. Yeah. And so, uh, so we re- realized that this may be too hilly to live because I'm yeah. not trying to work out every day to go to the store. Yeah. Everybody there has like amazing glutes. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. So well, you, couldn't, got- you couldn't do it day one. If you were there for an extended period of time, nope. You, you, I'd, I'd be mad every single day. You, yeah. Tell me that week three. I'll be tired I- every single day. I bet you by yet you think that now, but I guarantee you. I know, believe me, I know that now. Yeah. Well, okay, here, wait, wait. Here's, here's how I know. You adapt. I know you. Here's adapt. how I know. Uh, I still hate walking <laughs> to this day, and we have been on this European journey since May fifth. That's right. May seventh. May seventh. May seventh. Well, we landed. We landed right. in Barcelona right. on May seventh. So yeah. we have been off boat. And Figures just straight about walking, no matter walking what. most, unless we're taking a boat, a, a, a like public transportation somewhere. Since May seventh, mm-hmm. I still hate walking. I fill my walkabouts. 
Hey, I want to shout out to anybody because we are one of the number one digital nomad time travel podcasts to anybody who's coming at this years behind this and is just catching up on the back catalog because I know one day you will exist. This is me from the bottom of my heart shouting out to you for coming back here because you probably started in episode three or 400. We see you. We love you. May 7th. We're recording this on August 31st of August this month. Yeah, yep. So right. all of May, all of June, all of July, all of August. August. All is that the August. next one? Yeah. All so basically August, yeah. four solid months. Four solid we're, months. We're a week away from it being four months of you doing this. this is, right, exactly. And I still hate walking. I do it because it's what you do. And you know, I yeah, people tell me if you keep walking, you'll get used to it and you whatever, whatever. Okay, when? Yeah, I'm used to it. He's not used to it. I'm used to it. <laughs> no, I, I, but I, I don't like walking. Yeah, fair. Right? So, you know, it's like, ugh, I'll do it. Because, again, what I'm going to do is not go to the movies, not go to the mall, not go shopping. Not hang out with friends. Not yeah. hang out with friends. You're no, I'm going to do all those things. And so walking is a part of that. Now, I'm getting in good shape for a minute, right? So I am seeing the benefits of it, but I don't like it. <laughs> I still don't like it. It's really good to get the exercise in the environment, though. I think that's maybe the best part of traveling this way right. is I don't feel like I have to go to a gym, even though we'll still go, you know, I still go to a gym. Um, but I don't feel like I have to because every day I'm getting some form of exercise that's, you know, good, solid exercise. Like, right. I feel like my body's moving. It's doing what it needs to do. And like, I don't know, I guess I think I just feel better. I think I just feel better as a result. So, yeah, so yeah. That's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a it's not a, a, a negative. It's a plus. But yeah, it would have been a negative, definitely in Lisbon. In Lisbon, it would have definitely been a negative. Yeah, no, I, I didn't. I didn't want to do. I that. may not have seen a whole bunch of people. I may not have gone a whole bunch of places because no. I, I would be like, man, I'm not. I'm not looking to climb up these hills. No, we realized very quickly that this was not the move for us. <laughs> so. I, I would have gone broke taking uh, tuk tuks. Yeah, <laughs> taking Ubers all the time and yeah, bolts, all bolts the time. and the Ubers and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. but so, then then we got to Malaga. Yeah. And we were still trying to figure out what we were going to do at that point in time, because at that point, you know, the only thing we knew about Malaga, the only thing I knew about Malaga when I booked it was that they had a beautiful beaches, which is the reason we were there, and that it was the birthplace of Pablo Picasso. So I figured they must have some good art. And I love yeah. it. So thought, all right, we're going to head down here. We're going to spend a week here. And we got there and we looked around and said, maybe another week. And yeah. after that week, we said... Maybe another two weeks. <laughs> you got sucked in by that bull with that butthole. Oh, huh? the well, this, with this the is butthole. before the bull with the butthole. Even before the bull. Because this, this was banal, this was banal, We're like, we love this place. Oh, the we beach is just right place. there. There's yeah. a beach right there. Yeah, there's something to be said about walking the dog next to the Mediterranean Sea every morning. Yeah, that just was a fantastic, just like an in, inspiring and beautiful and just calm and peaceful. Uh, every yeah. now and then you might see boobies. Every a uh, lot every now and again, all every the time, day, all the time. Every day constantly. It obligates you to open your eyes. <laughs> and um, look around and you know. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. see what else is out there because you don't want to get locked in on the boobies. <laughs> you so um a question for you. We've never t talked about this specifically. We've talked about it generally as part of being you know, the ecosystem of what makes the the digital nomading work. What is the, in, a, in, in US dollars, if you know the conversion, what would you say is in Malaga, the average cost of an Airbnb for a week? So now what I tell you is that Airbnbs have the tourist tax, which is what you're going to get everywhere, right? So the tourist tax, I'd say probably... On average, a good Airbnb, Airbnb, and we're here during high season, right? So we're here in the summer, you know, vacation June, time. June, July, August are the most expensive months. And mm -hmm. in the most expensive month, I'd say average is probably between five and six hundred dollars a week. And that's, you know, Airbnb, all inclusive, internet, you know, all the deal. Yeah. And because they're Airbnb, they're in all of the kind of like prime locations. Of course, so you're yeah. right next to the beach, you're right next to all the tourist areas, right. you're, you know, close to public transportation. So, you know, kind of the and, 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 and of all of that, still, I'd say probably about $500 a week. 
max. Which again, that's two grand a month ish. Super reasonable. You're not. You're 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 get, you're renting a place. Yeah. Bare walls. Yeah. 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 For that, and, and it's two grand yeah. a month, but that also includes. Furnish. All the all furnish. the furniture, all the bills, Internet. all the everything. Yeah. Right. TV, so we, you, we were yeah. paying yeah. about twenty three hundred a month with everything included in Vegas. Yeah. And we were looking out at a parking lot. Yeah. And yeah. the apartment across the way. Yeah, seeing my neighbor's car every day as right. I looked out my window. That was right. Whereas here we're paying there we're paying four hundred dollars less than that. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're right next to the beach. But we're looking out at, at the and Mediterranean looking out at the sea. Mediterranean every morning and waking and up to, you know, clouds and music and, you know. And, obvious, and obviously you, in the right scenario, let's, let's say all the visa stuff checks out and everything like that, you'll probably eventually find a place where you broker a relationship and rent direct because 100%. you're going to stay for a longer period of time. Yep. Yep. And now that 2000 becomes 1500 bucks. That person's making more. You're paying less. Everybody wins except for Airbnb. And well, we're not guys. even we're not even going to do Airbnb. Like, it's right? Just, I'm saying no you just cut them out. Just take them on out. And and yeah. by the way, shout out to Airbnb. Listen, if you want to sponsor this podcast, any of our podcasts, we we can edit that product. part out. We love your product, man. Airbnb has made this all possible. Airbnb, right. love you. And, you know, it's expensive and it, there is the tourist tax, right? So, yeah. um, you know, actually being in the economy, if we're actually there and working and living and we have our visa, well, then, you know, we're just having the same access to, uh, you know, local rentals and that kind of thing. And, you know, we'd have to set up that stuff. But it's amazing how, how, less, how much less expensive it is for all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Even though electricity and you know petrol and all of that is expensive for Europe, it's not expensive for Americans. It's just it's just not. Right. <laughs> you know. And you know, we, we had quite a few discussions with uh, Spaniards there, and, and you know, like the the bit of complaining and upset, and I I was very much like, yeah, I know we're we're definitely part of the problem. No question. No question. Yeah. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be a part of the problem, and then I'm gonna get in here, and I'm gonna. Uh, find a way to help become part of the solution, right? I'll, I'll make sure that a lot get of my back to the community. get back to the community. Yeah. Um, you know, how you get back to the community? Well, I taught Spain how to line dance, you know, to, to soul music, right? I gave them access mahjong. to a, I, I just saw that a, you... And Mahjong. Mahjong, 100%. That's right. Yeah, yeah this is, I, I'm, I'm, again, spreading the international Mahjong butt-touching society <laughs> uh, to Romania. Romania now has four players who know how to play and I'm going to hopefully teach a few more. You never know. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't know if you saw this. I don't know if you know this, but I recently learned that Sarah Boyle, who you introduced to your group in Vegas, Uh still occasionally joins. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her, her and bat scoop. They, uh, they occasionally go to a game and, and, um, you know, we, we help grow a community and, you know, I'm glad that we weren't the linchpin. The people who we introduced, who we introduced to it, stayed with it and stuck with it, and 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 bring more people. Yeah. Well, apparently there's a spinoff group that's happening now in the Chicago area, mm-hmm. uh, which is oh, wow. great. So, yeah, my, I mean, our friend Marla. Uh, shout out to Marla, who we met on the cruise ship. You guys heard her or episode 41, I think it was, uh, uh, called Mahjong Dominance and Facebook. Target ad audience. That's right. Uh, Facebook ad target audience. Um, she has started teaching people mahjong there. So she's in Chicago. She's in, in the Chicago area. Mm-hmm. She needs to come to RJ and my show. Agreed. I'm pretty sure she. I, I, I know she listens, and mm-hmm. uh, um, I'm. You know, I'll be sure to uh, make sure I send, send me a link, and I'll, I'll be sure to send that over to her. Absolutely, um, we'll do. Let you know the If you want to go check out that show, then you can definitely check out ElktonMagic.com, right? No, judge, judgmentalist.com. Oh, sorry, judgmentalist.com. Yeah, there's and, there's two shows in Chicago on September twelfth, and then we are in Nebraska on the fourteenth for one show at a place called the Sun Theater. Cool. By the time you hear this, you'll have six days. Roughly to get those tickets, so don't delay because that may sell out. So you know, and that Sun Theater show that. might be sold out because it's part of some festival that that town is doing. And I, I don't, 
unless I ask a lot of times I don't have a pulse on ticket sales or unless right. like there are some venues where you go in and specifically select your seats. So then I can go look at a seating chart and be like, Oh, okay. This is half filled or this is right. whatever. Um, the, the theater that's in um, Nebraska does not have that set up. A lot of theaters don't. Right, so right, right. there's there's only certain opportunities that I have to really creep on ticket sales without asking. Um, but I know that there's a decent, it's been a decent response to the Chicago one. So those, but there's two shows. So it's a little easier there. Yes, um, good stuff. I What's have that? some old friends. Yeah, that... big things are happening, you know, with with the host of Big Sexy Digital Nomad over here. And so, um, okay, so we're in Spain. We're in Spain. We uh, and at this point, it's just you and me, right? We're just for the kinda, first part. Yeah, for the first really maybe just... like month or so, it's just he and I hanging out. Really? Uh, and then there was the fateful pole class, uh, as you guys know, if you've heard, uh, maybe one of the you I think, heard it. maybe from the earlier show yep. or something. The for episode fun. of Hey Kelsey, thank you. Yeah, yeah. For fun and fitness, I do pole dance. And uh, that's where we met and connected with the person, Kelsey, who you've heard, who connected us with the whole community of expats. And I mean, when I say the whole community, I mean like the whole community. Yeah, yeah, it was massive. Um, you know, and, and my listeners, you guys have heard me talk, you know rail about on it. about it, talk on about it, and all the interviews we've done with the folks from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just an amazing group of folks, you know. Uh, they're adventurous and they're fun, warm, friendly from all over the world, all different ages, all kinds of experiences. Uh, and I think that was when like, it's like, oh, okay. We had the realization that like, maybe we found the place that we actually want to be. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of tooled around there for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, knowing we had to leave there in 90 days. Uh, if you're in the U.S. right now, it's, it's going to change next year. But if you're a, from the U.S. right now, you get 90 days without a visa that you can tour around uh, any of what we call the Schengen area countries, which is basically Europe. Um, most well, how of the is that changing next year? So next year, they are going to require, Europe's going to require the uh, visitors from the United States to actually apply for a visa. Oh, so it's getting folks- worse. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, the same way folks from the the Europe have to apply for a visa to go to the U.S. Yeah, we have to apply now to come and that to come to Europe. Now it's supposed to be not so cumbersome. I think it's the average they're saying it's going to cost something like eight or nine dollars per person. We're not talking anything that's like crazy, but if you're planning a trip to Europe next year, double check, make sure that you have filled out your visa application because you can no longer just show up. Uh, at the airport and and uh, jump on a plane. You've do got your to, research. Uh, let them know ahead of time now that we're coming. I'm going to need to do big my research. Because, yeah, big section. I don't know my travel information. I, I haven't booked flights yet, but we've talked about me going to Egypt. Um, and I'm sure that I will have some. I guess if I'm doing a layover, I don't really leave the airport. I'm still kind of in a little bubble when you fly international that they scoot you through to your next flight? It, it depends on the country. You really have to check. Cause like the, I thought that was true too. You know, who is the, the most strict about that? United States, United States, even for a layover, our friend Sabine, who I think also was on the podcast. Yes, she was. Sabina had to pay. Living something, Pura Vida. Yeah. She had to pay like something like 50, 50 euro or something just to transit through the United States. Right. She's very upset about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, just to pass through to on her yeah. on her, on on her, her way, way to, to Costa Rica, Canada or Costa Rica or something like that. Yeah, she had to stop in the U.S. and so I w- I would really double check because depending on the country, they may require you to have even like a transit visa. I, I don't know. I don't know about Egypt, so I mean, I don't know. But uh, right. I'm, I'm going to take a look here real quick, you know, for research purposes because I haven't even looked into flights for this yet because there was a period of time in which we thought. Hey, let's go to Greece for a couple of days. Let's go yeah. here for a couple of days. Let's do something yeah. to get there for a couple of days and then there. So I've never even looked at flights. Um, what's LHR? Yeah. But Greece is a profit visa, right? That's a, a visa, right? long home run. <laughs> Baseball term. Is that, a, uh, is that an airport? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, oh, Heathrow. London Heathrow. Ah. See, I don't know. I, I don't even yeah. freaking know half of the... Um, so that would be a London layover. 
Oh God, oh, am I regretting this? Layovers. But London is not a part of the, uh, is now thanks to Brexit. Here's they're how the yeah. things engine. change. They're not part of the Schengen anymore because they're not part of the EU. So they've got their own little separate they deal. They got their own rules. On. Yeah. So again, it takes a lot of research. And my wife did her due diligence. I did. Uh, continues to do her due diligence. I do. And and um, that's how we ended up in Romania. Kind we, of, yeah. Well, we, no, we, we, we had to get out. We had to get out. That's and right. our UK plans fell through. That's right. So, so wife put on her, you know, where 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 in the world are we going? Where in the world can we go in Europe and not be a part of this visa? And, and that, there are only five countries that you can go to in Europe that are not a part of the Schengen uh, travel visa rules, right? right. Let's see. I'm trying to think if I remember them. Cyprus is one. Bulgaria is one. I think uh, Albania, Moldova. And Romania. And Romania. And, you know, of all those places, uh, actually Albania looked like the most appealing. The challenge with Albania is bringing the dog. In case the listeners dog. don't know, I, of course, travel with my puppy Fox. And so that adds another layer of complexity to travel, of course, right. to walk around and fly around and, you know, boat around with a little doggy. Um, and Albania, they just don't really do pets. So uh, what I read was it would be difficult to find health care for him. It'd be difficult to find food for him. It'd be right. difficult to, you know, there are a lot of like stray dogs, I guess. They don't really look at dogs as pets. So there's just kind of like a, a lot of strays running around. So it didn't seem like an ideal place. In that regard, in every other regard, by the way, guys, Albania looked amazing. Great beaches, inexpensive, good internet. Like, it really hit a lot of the, yeah, Albania, the, the you, highlights. You got to go check out Albania and then write in and tell us about your experiences. Absolutely. If you go to Valor, let me hear about it because it looked amazing. Um, but of those choices, Romania made the most sense and uh, Bucharest looked like the right place to go so off we went to Here Bucharest. We are. yeah literally we made that decision on a monday and then we flew out on a wednesday right yeah and then landed in the middle of romania having no idea what romania what was going doing, to be what like, gonna be like and at all my listeners may recall that first two nights we stayed in that haunted uh the haunted the, the haunted, haunted airbnb, airbnb. <laughs> um yeah before, before we got more situated um and then met the fabulous reluca and you know it, you, our history, keep listening to the different episodes. You're catching up with this. Backtrack a little bit more, and you'll hear all the uh, our Romanian exploits. Yeah. Um, but how was your um, a viewpoint of the whole travel as yeah. things have changed? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, my my I have a my view is a little bit for me about fifty percent of the time looks the same way it did in the United States. You know, kind of do what I do. Um, but you know, the other half it has been. Um, it, it's just been perspective changing, eye opening. Uh, it's been fun. It's been like I don't know, like it, it, what aspect, right? Like well, now how has okay? Well, cause this is one thing I've always wondered. Could hmm. you, of the two of us, you were much more the world traveler than I. That's true. Yeah. So how does this experience differ huh. than the previous experience? I, I mean, I, other than the fact that before it was Asia. And this is Europe, right? Well, before it was Asia, this is Europe. Before I was in my 20s. Right. <laughs> and now I'm in my 30s. <laughs> 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 uh, Not in my 30s, listener. Number um, one time travel podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Even our so guests when they come on this podcast, they try <laughs> and they time travel. They time travel. We time travel, guys. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, I what I like about this trip versus the previous trip, the previous trip, um, it wasn't they weren't really like tourist trips for me. I was like going to Japan to work. I was going right. to Germany to study. Um, I was going to Thailand. Actually, no, Thailand was kind of like this. I was going to Thailand because, you know, Thailand. Right. <laughs> but um but this time it's uh I think it's just been a lot more relaxing. Uh it's been a lot less stressful. Uh and I think I've had a lot greater opportunity to meet a wider range of people doing a greater number of things, right? Like when I was in Japan, I was teaching English and so everybody I knew was an English teacher. Like right. that's just what it was, right? Um, when I was in Germany, I was a you know a foreign exchange student. So everybody I knew was a foreign exchange student. 
you know, and here I'm meeting folks that are, you know, English teachers and digital nomads and corporate folks and entrepreneurs and investors and, you know, people are kind oh, of because, doing I mean, different I mean, things. You're, you're doing a touristy thing in a local way. So yes. you're in the actual community. It's not like you're doing a thing like, you know, things for school, right. you're kind of in a bubble. Yeah. You go to a resort, you're kind of in a bubble. Yeah. You know, things like that. You're just in the world. You're sure, living. you're paying extra fees as, yeah. as tourists yeah. and travelers, but in general, yeah. you're real people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> real people yeah. meeting real people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I've always, it's, it's interesting because uh, I keep saying that, um, you know, when people ask us, Oh, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing uh, in Romania? You guys here on holiday? No, not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> no, you know, uh, away from. Well, well, I'm from you know the United States, you know, but, uh, but not, I not, now I live now I live on Earth. Yeah, you know. Shout out to Jen Briney, uh, who gave us digital nomad comma Earth. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, that is now you know us. Yeah, what do you live? Digital nomad comma Earth. We are wherever I am at is home. Yeah, you know, and I kind of love that. Yeah, I really do love that. Yeah, I thought I would, and I was right. What's been your favorite part so far? My, randomly, my favorite part of the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole shebang. Um, you know, interestingly enough, the ability to adapt no matter where I am in the world, mm-hmm. um, and be able to find wonderful people and experiences and see major sites and see how things are so, so different. So different. In other parts of the world, especially here in Romania, right? Because. Yeah, this has been the most different part of the trip, I think. It really has. Because, I mean, I mean, you're in, you know. A I mean, former, we're in the Balkans. Right, in a former communist nation. Yeah. Right, you know, um, and, and that's still very, very evident in like things like the architecture. And, yeah the attitude of older people and uh yeah you know the the, the fashion sometimes right in that sense like you know the mall <laughs> like there's right. like some interesting kinds of places that like if you're talking about time travel like going to the mall in romania felt like time travel that is time travel right there yeah, yeah. It, it's like stepping directly more. into I'll... the 90s oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah well, there me. there is a mall i guess it's yeah it's a mall um in Delaware that my daughter and I call the dirt mall. And it (laughs) is very much like one of those we're back in time. Yeah. It's, it's kind of run down. It's, it's not, you know, and, and and Delaware because it's tax free. Yeah. Is one of like the last places in the States where malls still thrive, but not this one. Right. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, see, that's different. Though. Here, and these malls are thriving. They're thriving. It feels very much like I'm back in the 80s, yeah. hanging out at the local mall yep. that is thriving, that has the stores attached to it. All the stores are open. It's crowded. All the young people are running around hanging out. The food court is full. Right. People are going to the movies in the mall, and that's jam-packed. Yeah, it's a place to go to just go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, if I need to get out of the house because wife is have a, a back to back bunch of back to back sessions, I'll walk to the mall. Yeah, I'll walk again. I hate walking, so I'll walk over to the mall, uh, get my steps in, and walk around the mall, and then do some people watching. Yeah, uh, it's been wonderful and great. Yeah, what's been your favorite part of Romania or the whole trip? The whole trip, the whole trip oh, to Budo. We- beaches man i'm all about the beaches i loved being able to just walk on a beach be by a beach sit on a beach like yeah nothing to do feeling kind of bored i think i'll just go to the beach like it was just yeah there there was something very lovely about uh instead of walking to the mall yeah when you had your sessions leave okay i'm gonna go walk along the i'm gonna walk along the seaside and just walk up and down the coast Well, and the other thing is that, you know, and I think this is why Americans flock to European cities is because there's something really human about the way the cities are built and laid out. Like there are walkable places for you to be. It's not like I'm dodging traffic to be walking around. Like there's like every corner you turn the corner and there's something that's like either beautiful or awe-inspiring or just like crazily old, you know, (laughs) so it just stood out from the architecture. Um, 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's just something about being able to walk in a place where it's really easy to feel like a sense of awe and like a sense of uh, beauty and to be close to nature. Uh, and I think that, you know, in most most urban environments that would have all the same kinds of things that you would want to have in an urban environment, you have to sacrifice those things, right? Right. I have to sacrifice like beautiful buildings and I have to sacrifice access to nature and all those kinds of things. So yeah, I think uh, that part for me is, has always been like, I can wake up and just walk a random corner and like, oh my God, there's something beautiful there. Right. Yeah. I think that was, yeah, but, but the mainly the beach, <laughs> primarily the beach. Yeah. <laughs> what about you judgmentalist? And your travels, what's been your, one of your most favorite travels? Since we started on this journey, so this, I mean, this episode 50, this is a milestone episode. Let's look back. So from October of last year to now. Uh, I've done two cruises. Yeah. And when we first started, I had done a grand total of zero. So right. I've done two cruises since. Welcome um, to the cruise life. I've lost count of Vegas trips, but that's normal. Um what else have I done? You learned uh, hypnosis, I, sir. I did, I did learn hypnosis. I mean, that's not. I that was just another Vegas trip. I mean, it wasn't just another Vegas trip, but yeah, that was in a Vegas trip. Yeah, I, 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 I think that most of my crazy travel is really just getting started. Like yeah. I had a call yesterday with a group down at Georgia Tech about booking the show. Um, yeah, and that's just you know, and, and that's kind of one of those we talked about it one of the previous mm-hmm. episodes. The method to my madness of booking out this show and coordinating with nonprofits in and that kind of low risk, no risk fee schedule. You know, this was one. The Georgia Tech thing was through a uh, a fraternity that was doing a fund wants to do a fundraiser event. Yeah, and I said, look, we're going to cap the fee at X. However. You know, it's either going to be fifty percent of the ticket sales or this amount of money, whichever one is less. Mm-hmm. That way, there's really no risk. And if you can get me, you know, this is Georgia Tech University, which is in Atlanta. Yeah. Georgia Uni- University of Georgia is in Athens, which is like an hour and a half, hour and forty five minutes away. Right. There's a chapter of the fraternity there. I said, if you can link me up with them, and in the same weekend we do a second show, mm-hmm. I'll lower that cap. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because if we can fly down, because part of that is just paying for our expenses. So, right. Right, right. you know, if we can lower our expenses, we're going to lower your cost. We're not trying to gouge anybody. We're not trying to get rich doing this. We just enjoy doing it. With the, otherwise, yeah. Other, uh, otherwise, you we might want to change that mindset and start thinking about getting rich doing this. And George is oh, beautiful, by it, the way. Volume, volume. You know what I mean? And I, I, I think that you, you know, in this world you gain a lot in the ways that you find opportunities to give. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily an immediate give and take, but you know, it's, it's a very easy entry point for us to do something that we want by linking it with a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of the work off of our shoulders by making it a fundraiser because kind of that deal is you guys are going to sell and push the tickets. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to show up and do the show. So we're not, you know, we're going to provide every level of support that we can, but we're not out there working the streets, hustling tickets the way that the organization should be. And, you know, I I mean, Overall, it just it feels great to be able to do something for a good organization. I mean, the very yeah. first show that of this type that we did was for the Boys and Girls Club here locally. We helped them raise six thousand. I'd nice. love to have a year's worth of shows where, sure, we made our money, but we get to tally that total and say, "Hey, we were part of raising you know a quarter million dollars for various nonprofits this year." That'd be, That's right. that'd be fantastic. I'd I'd love to be able to tell that story. That's right. Your lips to the universe's ears. That's right. Make that happen. And all of that comes back to you, you know, that, and again, it may be in ways that are unforeseen, but, you know, the world has a way of, of working for those who work for the world. Yep. Agreed. That's kind of, yep. That's kind of, uh, that's, I'm really in that, that vein right now. That's why we're doing this podcast. That's right. Right. We're providing and, out, and also our podcast. Oh, as a, as a healer, like I don't know. Now, yes. <laughs> um, uh, this is a great place to. By the time you hear this episode, 
uh, I will be a part of a second podcast that my wife uh, started and I'm co-host on. Yep. Uh, and it's called, called uh, Rainbow Dreamcatcher. The, the Love, love Podcast. podcast. <laughs> Where we talk about love and relationships. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and really the skills that you need to be able to have like a good, healthy, solid relationship. How do you overcome challenges? How do you build trust? Like all the things I, I think I hear in my practice. I'm a marriage therapist. I'm sure you guys know. Um, yeah, I'm a relationship therapist. I'm a relationship coach. Um, and so it's just a good way, like you're saying, to give back so that folks who, you know, really need good, solid information about like, how do I build, you know, a fun, healthy, supportive relationship? Uh, hopefully this podcast will give you some some good, solid information about how to do that. Yeah. And unlike, unlike this podcast where we get on here and we just shoot the shit and talk about stuff that's happening or whatever. Uh, Rainbow Gym Catcher focuses more on topics around those. Uh, I like it because it's much more um, focused, right? It's pretty topical. We, we hit, we hit specific, each week we hit a specific topic in the world of relationships and love. And then we dive into that topic and we kind of share personal anecdotes and uh, we get answer questions. We get, we get questions from listeners yeah. uh, or, you know, friends who before, because we haven't listeners just yet, but friends who ask, them, give us some questions. And so they gave us some questions. Uh, we got some, you know, um, uh, stories as well. Um, a lot of, a lot of you dating know, horror dating stories, horrors, uh, oh, uh, dating success stories. So yeah, um, you can check us out at Rainbow Dreamcatcher, the Love Podcast. That's right. Like uh, our first episode is uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, and our first episode drops tomorrow. Romance scams. Romance scams. And then the next tomorrow, one, like actual tomorrow. Fridays? Tomorrow, as of recording, yes, our first episode drops on my birthday. That's right. Oh, wonderful! And Rainbow Dream, Rainbow Dream Catcher, the Love Podcast will drop every Friday. Yep. Um, so, listeners, if you really love hearing the sound of my voice, you can get a, a triple. Uh, you get a triple shot now. I'm gonna hit you up Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Yeah. But you know, two of those are this one, and then one's the Rainbow Love Podcast. So yeah, yeah. so listen in, uh, and, and and tune in, and it's a quick, it's a very different experience, and I really like that as well. Thanks for the awesome. shout out. No, oh, of course, <laughs> of course, yeah. We're uh, I listen to one of Jesse's podcasts. It doesn't have my voice on, so I don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so man, first, you know, it's 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 amazing as I, like, we're getting close uh, to the time that we kind of end these things. So. Before I do, I want man. I want to give a big thank you and a big shout out first and foremost to Ice Cream Social. Um, really, one of my first podcasts that I really listened to that I mm-hmm. followed along because mm-hmm. without them we wouldn't be here, right? Yeah. And then a uh, second without shout them, out. We wouldn't know each other probably. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because I mean, we, we our our paths wouldn't have crossed otherwise, right? I, I mean, I don't unlikely. Very, unlikely. very unlikely. Very unlikely. Not impossible, right? but unlikely. Yeah, and the next uh, shout out I want to give out is hey, to... Hey, buddy, nice podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, because uh, without their meme, I wouldn't have been prompted to reply, I'm a weirdo who wants to start a podcast, and you wouldn't have responded, let's talk about it. Yeah, I'm a weirdo too. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's talk about it. And, you know, and, and we talked about it, and, you know... 50 episodes later, here we are, mm-hmm. you know, uh, started to travel podcast about my ideas about seeing the world with my lovely wife and, and doing the thing and becoming a digital nomad. And we're like, let's go, big sexy digital nomad. And lo and behold, you know, here we are broadcasting, you know, recording from Romania in Bucharest, Bucharest. jamming in Bucharest. Uh, oh, uh, update uh, on, uh, we do have a date. That's where we right. are headed back Hallelujah. to Malaga. Yes. Ooh. Uh, October 18th. October 18th. Is Mark the go the date. date. Mark yes. the date. October 18th. We're headed back to Spain. Uh, we're starting the process of getting all the ducks in a row to get the visa. We got to do the, the FBI check and and the um, uh, marriage certificate marriage, and birth certificate. Find and the classes. Classes. And, you know, start that, all that kind of process. And so uh, we're going to. Get me a student visa, uh, so that we can come. And I'll learn, I'm really gonna learn Spanish, so we're gonna have I might have to do an episode in Spanish, um, 
That'll be that'll be interesting. You may have to do all the future episodes with a Spanish with a Spanish translation. What what I might do is is Make definitely interview, interview somebody there and do it in Spanish. Mm-hmm. Like see if I can conduct an interview in Spanish and then provide uh and then have it transcribed and for the Patreon listeners, you would get video that would have English subtitles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I could take that episode and have fun and do like a a, um, a, a dub over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, fun fact, if you study, apparently if you study a language four hours a day, it should take you about six months to get fluent, to actually be fluent, like conversationally fluent in that language. So fun fact, guys, six months. Yeah, Pendulette is going to be my... Uh... My model, my example, because mm-hmm. he, learned, he learned Spanish enough to be able to perform in Spain, nice, um, and be able to improvise in Spanish, mm-hmm. right? As opposed to just learning the text and learning whatever, he was able to take questions and be able to improvise and speak in Spanish. But he's a workaholic, so he's going to be my inspiration. But I'm not going to be able to follow exactly in his footprints. So I guess we also owe a big thank you to uh, uh, Penn Sunday School. Because the one that, the because Nick Penn Cannon Sunday School, podcasts. yeah, it's uh, the, the yeah the Nick Cannon, the Grand Granddaddy Penn Sunday School. So thank you, Granddad. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. What I'm really what I'm really excited for, other than my birthday tomorrow. Yes, by the way, listeners, right. it was my birthday on Friday. Feel free to send us a happy happy birthday. Feel free to send a happy birthday message. I appreciate those. Uh, and tell somebody to subscribe to our podcast. That'd be a great gift. Great um, gift. I'm really looking forward to the next. Uh, it's a chapter that I don't know the, the 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 outcome. I'm reading a book and I know that what the next chapter is going to be, but I'm really looking forward to reading it and be a part of it and existing in it. Agreed. And seeing what you know, we met so many amazing people, so many phenomenal lives are now in our lives and we're yeah. in their lives. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it really does feel like a. It feels like a, an unfolding fairy tale. It really does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's really great to be a part of it. And listeners, great, so happy to have you. So thankful for all of you, all of you, anybody who's with us from the beginning, who who follows all the way to fifty. Thank you so very much. Um, anybody who's new and just came on right now, thank you. If you're hearing this and you came on way later, but you backtrack like Judge said earlier, thank you. Sincerely, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, your support is phenomenal. Uh, we feel the love across the miles, wherever you are in the world. We thank you for being big, sexy world travelers. Uh, I don't know if you saw on X, uh, uh, been having a conversation actually with Paul Madden and what we should call our listeners. Um, nothing's hitting my ears yet. Nothing like being a big, sexy world traveler. So listen, if you have something you want to call yourselves that's better than that or different than that, hit us up. Let us know. We're taking all. I'm, I may run a poll on X. Not the buttholes. Or thread. No, definitely, definitely not. not. <laughs> definitely Terrible. not the the, the, tor- the total buttholes. The, the, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the butthole bulls. The butthole bulls. <laughs> the bull holes. I think I think you'd have a whole different set of listeners. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. yeah. It's our bull holes. The That's, bull holes. The bull holes not bad. It's not terrible. The it's bull holes are not bad. Yeah. Uh, so just that, that I'm gonna have to do a poll now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, thank you guys so very much. Uh, anybody you want to thank, Judge? Anybody? I think you covered it. I mean, I want to thank you guys. Thanks for putting in the time and the work. Like, I don't know, it's been really fun to kind of be on the sidelines and watching all this grow and expand. And I think it's just been really awesome. So, thanks to you guys for putting this t- together, putting it out there putting yourselves out there. Like, thanks for the entertainment, y'all. It's been great. It's been a pleasure. It really has been a pleasure. Like, I think I've truly found one of my callings. You know, I'm an actor. I love the stage. Everybody knows I say all all the time, I'm at home on stage. When I'm on a stage performing, I am in the zone. I'm happiest. People see me after performance. I can't stop smiling. I'm just so happy. You know, whatever. Uh, uh, If you get a chance to see me on stage, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, this is right there with that. I love doing this podcast. I absolutely love it. Um, I love talking to the microphone, to uh, imagining millions and millions of ears listening. 
Um, They'll get it eventually. Yeah, yeah, and and it will. You know, I, I love having a platform and talking and you know talking about my travels and meeting people and 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 sharing those kind of stories. Like that's that's big for me. So I appreciate that, y'all. Sweet deal. Well, thanks for letting oh. me join, guys. I so much oh, yeah. appreciate Thank it. It's been really fun. I'm so happy to have you. Uh, where where can the people find you um, if, if they want to look for you? Yeah, if you want to look for me on the social medias, you can find me at Colorful Humans Global. Uh, and you can also find me at Nella Berry White. That's right. And uh, uh, you also catch us at Rainbow Dreamcatcher TLP. The Love Podcast. The Love Podcast. So be sure to check out all those things. And, uh, I might already be following this. I need to make sure. You may be. I think yeah, you already are. You. But uh, until then. Safe travels. Safe travels.